Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to download and install PPSSPP on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So I'm recording this on my M1 Pro, which is the 14 inch base model. We're going to be running some PSP games using the PPSSPP emulator. So what you find is that if you do try to download the official build of this application, then you're going to have trouble opening it. So it's going to say here that it's damaged and it can't be opened. So the simplest way to get the latest version of PPSSPP that's working is to go ahead and build it. And it's actually very simple to do. The first stage is to install homebrew. So this is very quick. All we need to do is to go to the brew.sh website, which I'll leave a link to in the description. And then we're going to copy this command here. So we're going to click this clipboard icon. And when that tick is on, that means that we've copied this command into our clipboard. Then we're going to go to the top right hand here. Then we're going to type in the word terminal and press return. I'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger. So here, all we need to do is paste that command we've just copied. So I'm going to control click on the space and click paste and then press return. Then we type in our password and press return. And then we press return again to continue. So if it's the first time you're installing Homebrew, it's going to install command line tools. This might take a little bit of time to download. Just let that run for a little bit. So once the command line tools have downloaded, this might take about six or seven minutes, depending on the speed of your internet connection. I'm going to type in my password again and press return. So now it's going through the process of installing Homebrew. So this just takes a few minutes to download Homebrew and install it. The very important step that we have to do next is to copy and paste these two lines, control click, press copy, and then paste it into here and press return. And then this makes sure that we have brew ready. So if I type in the command brew, then we have the commands all laid out there. All we have to do now is type in the command brew, install PPSSPP and then press return. This is basically going to download all of the latest PPSSPP files and then build them into a native ARM build. So once that's done, we can see that the files have been generated inside the homebrew seller folder. Go to finder, click go, click go to folder, and then type in forge slash opt and press return. And we're going to go to the opt folder. Then we can double click on homebrew and then seller and then PPSSPP. And then we've got this file version here and we've got the PPSSPP SDL. So when we get to this folder, what we can go ahead and do is double click on PPSSPP SDL and this will open up the application. Here it's asking us to give permission to the application to receive keystrokes. So we just click on that, click on the padlock here, type in your password, then click the tick on the left here and close that. And basically we have the full version of PPSSPP here. You can see that this is the Apple Silicon version. So if you'd like to be able to make a handy shortcut, what I recommend that you do is to copy this to your desktop and then you hold down the option and command key and that gives this little arrow here and that's an alias, so basically a shortcut. I can let that go on the desktop. And then if I want to play this game again, I can always drag it to the dock here, or I could just leave it on my desktop and then I can open this up again to get into PPSSPP. So to actually load a game is relatively simple. All we need to do is to find our file. So I've got them all in my emulation folder here, which is on my desktop. So I'm gonna to go to desktop, press okay to give permission, then go to emulation and then go to PSP. Let's load up God of War. So at the same time, we can also load up a controller. I've got my Xbox One wireless controller here, which I'm gonna turn on. If I want to access the settings, all I need to do is press escape. I can go to settings here. So what I do recommend that you do is to switch the backend from OpenGL to Vulkan. That's going to improve performance substantially. I'm going to show you the FPS counter so we can actually see the speed of this game. I'll press back and then load up this game. So this cinematic is now loading. Previously when I tested this out, it was a bit choppy, but I think since I've switched it back to the Vulkan backend. So the Vulkan backend should be using Molten VK, so this should be running much faster than before. So basically you can see that this game is running pretty well. It's running at the full frame rate that I'd expect. We're not having any of the cutscene issues that I was having before. So this is probably due to the improved performance, especially of the native ARM build. Anyway, to get to back to the menu, all you need to do is press the home button on the controller. And if you wanted to full screen this, you could always click this green button here and it's going to full screen this game into the correct aspect ratio and resolution. So I can go ahead and continue. If I want to up the graphics as well, I can go to settings and then I can change the rendering resolution. So normally something like times three is pretty much ideal. And we have a virtually 1080p type experience at the moment. Also, once I've turned it up to three times the resolution, the game is looking very sharp. So this is definitely very playable and it's running nicely at 60 frames per second. I'm sure I could tweak the settings even more, but it seems to be running fine on this system. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.